Purim. Purim is one of the most unusual holidays in the Hasidic Jewish community. It is the wildest holiday. That says a lot for a community that doesn't do very wild holidays and is generally very restrained and well behaved. Purim is the day that the Jews celebrate the story recounted in the book of Esther, which is a story of an evil Persian advisor who tried to get the Persian king Ahasuerus to exterminate all of the Jews, and in the end, his edict was overturned and Haman was, was hung, and the Jews celebrate that moment with costumes, singing, dancing, and for the men in particular, getting very drunk. I visited Hasidic Williamsburg on a very, very rainy Purim day, and we were there to take it all in. Happy Purim on a very gray and rainy Purim day. We're gonna be walking down Bedford Avenue to see what's happening in Williamsburg today. The Purim day begins with a synagogue service where the entire book of Esther, which recounts the whole saga of the miracle of the Purim day is recited in an over hour long service, which I did not attend. After which, the merriments in the streets begin as everyone heads out to deliver gift baskets of food to friends, relatives, teachers, neighbors, and so on. The baskets will generally have a little bit of pastry and maybe a bottle of wine or grape juice, although the joke is that it often has more ribbons and cellophane than actual food in there because presentation is key. And if you are delivering a gift basket to a relative, an in-law of an engaged couple, a bride or a groom, then that gift basket will be extremely elaborate and will really have to be extra, extra made to impress. Okay, we're gonna go inside. We're gonna look at the Shalchmanis gifts for Purim. The Shalchmanis, a very big one, very uh, elaborate one, which is the, the baskets of gifts people are giving today. Um, and it usually has wine because wine is central to this holiday. Men are supposed to get drunk. So, this is very pretty Shalchmanis, I think. Look at this. All of this is. Uh, chocolate on the theme of alcohol. The costumes are probably the most interesting part to me. The children are all in costumes and strikingly, they're very different costumes than what you'd see in Halloween. There are no scary costumes. No one is wearing sexy nurse outfits. There's nothing sexualized whatsoever. And there are no superheroes. There is nothing that indicates anything of television culture. Rather, you see a lot of career costumes, and many of those careers that Hasidim actually don't do, like a Starbucks barista, a UPS person, a policeman, a soldier, but also probably a more interesting kind of costume is the children dress up as adults. They will dress up in the Hasidic male big fur hat called the Strimal which is only worn after the marital rite of passage, or girls will wear the head covering that is also only worn after marriage, or the boys will wear a beard that comes in in adulthood. And I think when they put on these costumes, it is a moment of role playing a future in the city community that is very, very specifically tied to parenting and the family, as well as religious life. A lot of children dress specifically in the garb of Rebus, and by wearing these things, they are beginning to imagine and role play their future. And that I think is a very big part in imparting to the children what their future is gonna look like. Adults don't wear this kind of elaborate, cute costume themes. The men will wear a funny hat, a funny wig, funny goofy shoes and the women don't wear costumes at all. Yes, what are you dressed as? I'm an adult, I'm not a, a kid and the adults most of the time don't dress in a full, full costume. Full costume, they just dress like the uh, uh, cap and something else. As the day wore on, the rain lit up. It got even crazier in the streets and the traffic was so intense cars would just be sitting without being able to move at all and the horn blaring is pretty much about as loud as the music which is 
everywhere. One of the things we saw a lot of later in the day were groups of teenage boys who get together in what's called a mobile. Generally it's an RV or a bus or a van where groups of boys wearing the same outfit, the same costume, the same funny shirt will ride around the neighborhood, get out of the van, go to a wealthy person's house, uh, make some merriment music and excitement in the house and then expect charity money in return. This is a very, um, something that I was never privy to, I never participated in as I was raised a girl and the girls don't do this, it's a very male thing. And as I was a little audacious in the neighborhood, I checked out one of the buses that the kids are on and it looked like a disco party bus. <laughs> My cameraman Becca was so audacious as to try to accompany the boys on one of these trips and he was promptly expelled when he arrived inside. Um, so we didn't get to see some of the things that probably if I was a man I would be able to go in like the synagogue or some wealthy people's houses and it reminds me a little bit of what Purim felt like when I was in the community oftentimes I felt like it was uh, something that gave a lot of room for men and the women are supposed to participate as audience members. We also saw a lot of kids collecting charity in the streets, corners, a lot of hustling, which was very interesting. One little kid we took a picture of had the audacity to come up and say, uh-uh, you pay up or you erase whatever you took of me. And I think they are mostly raising money for their schools and then they enter raffles. Um, and it's something they, everyone is competing to raise more funds. As the day wore on after a coffee break, we started to see drunk men wobbling around, being propped up, gesticulating wildly, being very excited, dancing in the streets. After a while, I think if you see one drunk, you've seen probably all of them. We were ready to head out. It had been a really fun time and quite exhausting and a lot of energy, a lot of noise, a lot to take in. Quite interesting to head home on the train and to see all the green St. Patrick's Day's paraphernalia and think about all the ways that different cultures celebrate with drinking and merriment and letting loose. Mm -hmm.